everyone. Hello. Welcome to a drink with Mary and Mina. It's Mary and it's Mina. And the choice of our drink today is matcha milk. Ah, oh, it's really good. It's Sweet. Good. Hits yeah. the spot. <laughs> um Talking about hits the spot, we've got some tea today because we're here to spill some tea. <laughs> <laughs> Not our tea this time, of course. <laughs> our audience's tea, basically. Yeah. Um, but it will be anonymous. Don't be scared. Mm-hmm. Like we don't air your laundry, dirty laundry out. Just like that. Exactly. We probably don't even remember who sent who because we try not to look at the person. We just like, yeah. you know. Today's episode is quite deep. Um, and we had this idea forever. Mm. But one of you actually reminded us to do it. So Thank shout you. out to Reshma. Thank you, Reshma. Who reminded us about this topic. And we are now going ahead with actually like the idea. Now. Idea, yeah. Because yeah. we were always like, mm, should we? Should we not? Should we? Should we not? But then when our viewers motivate us, girl... We've got to do it. Exactly. So that's and it makes you feel for. good because you feel like your opinion, your advice is actually um, taken seriously. The theme today is Agni Aunt Letters. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So basically people send us their problems, people send us um, anything that's going on in their life that they want a second perspective on. Um, and we basically become the aunties um, and oh. then give you some advice. Aunties. Um, <laughs> so, Mary, shall I start? Yeah, you start. You pick your okay, one. Okay, I'll pick this one up, right? Um, how do you know that he's not the one anymore? <laughs> that's the that's the hard part, honestly. And I think we've both been through that a yeah, fair share yeah. amount of times. Uh-huh. If you want to know more in detail about our story, go to our podcast and listen to Thank You X. That's the episode 11. But for this person, uh-huh. you just know it. Yeah. You always know it, but then you always keep denying it. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you, oh, you always like the memories more than the person. And the thing is, the fact that you've asked this question says a lot about what you really think. Mm-hmm. Because you already know that he's not the one exactly. anymore. But you just need somebody else to confirm your feelings. Validation. Yeah. But I would say to see it analytically. Mm-hmm. Like, jot down the pros and cons. Like, is his pros, like, more than his cons? Uh, have you actually communicated what you find unsatisfying with him? Yeah. And has he actually made an effort to change it? Or exactly. are you just going around in a circle? If you're going in a circle, get out. The grass is green on the other side. Okay? Yeah. So they get very tempted with other people's relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so they're like, oh, why is my relationship not like mm-hmm. that? So if you're going off this based on someone else's relationship, then that's mm-hmm. wrong as well. Exactly. So you have to analyze it very well, sis. And mm-hmm. that's the hard part. Um, yeah. Good luck to you. How do you know if you like him? Ooh. Cupid's hit the town. This is the type of like feel good question that makes you feel butterflies again, right? Yeah. yeah. See, that's the feeling. That's how you know <laughs> you like him. And you want to spend all night talking to the person. Your phone will get Listen tired. Listen to his Spotify playlist. Listen to his Spotify playlist. If you look forward to seeing him, if you look forward to spending exactly. time with him, if you see yourself in realistic situations like you know daily activities mm-hmm. and all that or spending life together or oh this is this guy is compatible with me or i can see him with my friend circle and all that yeah. then that's like clear signs right? it's like go 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 yeah Ring, and even yeah right. even if there aren't clear signs just go for it because what's the harm what, what do you think about your friend dating your ex i uh, right let me provide you with the context right all right so I'm a ready. and B were in a relationship. A felt very strongly about B, and after a few years of um, break uh, breakup as well, he still feels quite strongly about this girl. So A basically thinks B is the one that got away. Here comes C. C is A's friend, and C is well aware what A feels about B. But C fancies B as well. Does that mean B got B and C got together? B and C are perfectly single. They're ha- they're okay to date each other, yeah. right? That looks perfectly good on paper. Yeah. Right. But what C did was, despite knowing how A still feels about B, he went behind his back and 
started seeing B? Number one, that's just disrespect. Why would you do that? Mm. You know? Number two, okay, fair enough, like your friend and then B has dated for like X amount of years and they've been off together for X amount of years. That's That may be okay to some people. I personally would not date my friend's ex because... Mm. That's just beyond boundaries to me, right? Yeah. So if I if I was C mm. and if I felt so strongly about B, mm. I would go to A and mm. be like, look, bro, I really like this girl. Uh-huh. If you don't want me to date her, then I don't know. I wouldn't even ask for his uh, yeah. permission, but I would let him know how yeah, I felt, to exactly. be fair. Because yeah. it's up to them to, to decide. It's not A's decision, right? Yeah. But then if it's A's soulmate Kalki vibe, then why would you do that? Yeah. Why would you risk your exactly. friendship over a girl? That's yeah. just stupid. That that was exactly my thinking because if C C and B, like I would say both of them because they know like how he feels about uh, her. So if C and B both had like given him a heads up saying, "Oh, okay, we look both like each other, so we're going to date." Mm-hmm. Not even a permission, okay? Because mm-hmm. they're perfectly fine, single, happy to yeah. like they're okay to date. I didn't like the sneaky part where B and C like secretly dated and let he, they just basically let him find out. Man, that's a sticky situation. Exactly, I right? do not want to be in it. I'm really sorry for you, A, yeah. but you go, boy. How do you find a job I like? Oh. I I'm in a job right now mm-hmm. that I am happy at, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it's completely unrelated to my degree. Exactly. Right? Same. And yeah. And but I'm happy. Like I'm the type of person who jumps every 2 to 3 years I jump into a new sector mm-hmm. because I'm still looking for the type of job that I would love. Like you know, for like I'm still looking for my forever job, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? This is actually quite funny because you and I are similar in that context. Mm. Because um, in this one workshop we had, you know, there was a category for people like us, the freedom seekers. Oh. So we don't like to sit in one place for too long. Yeah. Because yeah. we don't want to get comfortable, and exactly. that that makes us uncomfortable yeah. to be comfortable. Yeah. Sis, your job should not be the main priority of your life. To be honest, True. you don't. You don't you know, take that this, to your grave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you're just a number at work. Your work should be what pays you to do whatever you like. You like. Yeah. So don't give job that big of a priority. I mean, if you want to, go for it. You know, I don't want to be the type of person who goes home and then talks about the work as well. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, like this is what I mean. Like, I'm. We are not saying money is important. Money yeah. is very important. Exactly. Money actually mm. runs the world, as we may have already mm. known. But the way how you make money and how much you make money is entirely up to you. Um, Ani, but at the end of the day, you have to basically decide whether you want to hustle and get a job that you like mm-hmm. or try and enjoy the job you have. Yeah, you so know? it's it's up to you. Yeah. Again, that all comes down to how much you want mm-hmm. your income to be and then it's just about all about your ambitions really. How to tell your friend to move forward from clingy ex? Oh my. God. It's pretty fucking simple for me. Just remind yourself why he's your ex or she's your ex, you know. True. That should mm. fucking answer your question. Sometimes the kindest thing that you can do to a person is let them go, Mm-mm. you know? Because the, then they will have to face reality and move on with things. You know, you're basically if you're being if you're coddling them and if you're accommodating their feelings while they're being clingy at you, mm-hmm. then you are actually contributing towards um, hampering their progress in exactly. life. Exactly. Him trying to come back to you and be clingy, that's sort of like abuse in a way as well. Mm. Emotionally abuse. Exactly. It is like manipulation. Yeah, manipulation. Yeah. So much stress that like, you don't need that. Like you said, he's ex for a reason. Let him be an ex and exactly. not be in your life anymore. Move, move on. on. How do you get confidence? Sisters, that's what the person's put. How do you get confidence, sisters? First of all, thank you because this opinion is actually a compliment for us because this person clearly thinks that we're confident. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what's, what what ah, goes behind all this confidence and me, all this facade. To me, Malaite, I think confidence comes from practice. Yeah. Like fake it till you make it vibes and then you don't grow from a comfortable place. Mm. So I've thrown myself in like very awkward situations multiple times. So I think that's where my confidence kind of came from yeah. i guess you don't get confidence love you build, build one it. you know 100% and i have been i guess i've had so low self esteem in the past right mm-hmm. and it slowly took a lot of 
effort, a lot of hard work into pushing myself into different uncomfortable situations, mm-hmm. just like you. Yeah. It takes time, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Meanwhile, you invest in yourself, you invest in your skills, you invest in learning new things. You know, that's where your confidence comes from. When you start believing in yourself, no matter who yep. does not believe in you, it that's where your confidence comes from. How do you live in the present fearlessly? It's it just takes practice because life's a journey, you know. It's a long journey. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a long journey, if you're miserable, it's a short one if it's you have one. <laughs> That's she, all I'm you saying. know what? You spoke like you've lived like fucking hundred years. <laughs> it felt like hundred years. Well. No, because like when you're going from the lowest of your life to trying to progress where you want to be, it's mm. exhausting. I'm telling and you. And frustrating like, at times. Yeah, so many times. And it's frustrating for the people around you as well to live fearlessly in this day and age, like how you want to. What is your fearless? Yeah. That's the question as well. Mm. Is it actually like you facing your fears or you just being confident like the yeah. other person yeah. asked and just like, you know, being out there in the world? Yeah. Um, I've been on a journey of facing my fears for God knows how many fucking <laughs> long. So it's been an ongoing a battle. Tries. It it's always with Mina Didi because she brings out this... Uh, on the side of me, she's like, God him, God him. And I'm like, yeah, fuck it. And then I always regret it. And I always shit myself, but I still do it anyway. Because I don't like to remember how bad the last time was. Because <laughs> this would be a new bad, right? Yeah. So you don't bring your past trauma in. Mm. I guess that's how you live fearlessly. Yeah. And my my uh, one of my biggest mantra, like oh my god, look at us sharing mantra. mantra. Need some my, taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I close my eyes and I think about the worst case scenario. Yeah. You know, mm. like what's the worst case scenario? How shitty it could get. Like how bad it could get. Mm-hmm. And be like. Was it that bad? Yeah. And sometimes it just takes just blindly going into it. Sometimes you don't, you actually build the fear for something that's not actually that big. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Mm. Because after my uh, traumatic COVID journey, we went on this this freaking um, long walk, whatever we went through. Mm. And then they made me walk through this bridge. (laughs) <laughs> this these lot they that made you walk through a bridge the rain and, and then it's like the never go bridge Zulingi like you know Zulingi bridge and i hate that then i was there thinking what's worse gonna happen i'm gonna die i've already been there like i almost died so what's what's big deal like nothing so just fuck it and move on although i shat my pants but i felt a lot braver than i ever did before so you just got to do it yeah. the next one is a cheeky one i love this this is like the came on, sorry. desperate top, call out. <laughs> top notch. Top it's like a call bell for Mina Didi. Come on, face your fears. I'm answering we are that talking, call bell. <laughs> we are talking about fearlessness, face your fears. This is her one of her fears, I think. How do I convince convince my girl to get married? You don't <laughs> convince. You just put a ring on it <laughs> and it's done. Deal over. <laughs> If you guys haven't clearly, you know, uh, figured out who that question is from, it's from my boyfriend. This has been like a constant debate with my boyfriend and I, right? Mm -hmm. Um, We communicate very well. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've always said to him, like, he's, when he says marriage, he's talking about the ceremony not actually living together or oh, starting Oh, so a he life. wants that wedding bit. Yeah, yeah, like he wants that big fat Asian wedding. I'm not fussed about going through a ceremony because whether I go through a ceremony or whether not whether I don't go through a ceremony, if you treat me well, I'll be with you forever. My loyalty, my trust, my love doesn't get affected, doesn't change with one ceremony, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't treat me right, whether I'm married to you or not, I am out the door. I ain't I'm a yeah. little door open. <laughs> he, he's just trying to put it out there and be the man and let the world know what he wants. He can want whatever he can want. He does, that doesn't mean he you doesn't get, get. <laughs> <laughs> How to let go of something you can't stop thinking about daily. I have the perfect proverb for that, you know. Go on, You say know the it. Chinese saying, do you have a problem? Yes. Can you do something about it? Yes. Why worry? Can you do something about it? No. Why worry? I say like, if you can't stop thinking about it because you're just an overthinker, like because mm. some people generally are and you can't help it, 
find new hobbies to do yeah if you find new hobbies to do you don't have time to think yeah. that means you don't think at all exactly. Duh. Yeah. fill that time up with healthy habits you know? exactly and to be honest whenever you have healthy habits um, chemical reactions happen in your body mm-hmm. so scientifically it gives you good feels and good you know, what do you call it dopamine dopamine you get dopamines that will actually help you deal with the problem at hand and maybe take small steps to deal with the problem as well if you yeah. can yeah if it's dealable De- yeah, <laughs> dealable. No, if, if you it's, can, if yeah. you can, how to make the first move? Yes, I'm the queen of first moves. Um, I wouldn't know because I've never made the first move. If you want to make the first move, you just go for it. There's no dwelling on it. Just do it. If you don't do it, you won't get it what you want. Because <laughs> if you don't let them know, how are they gonna know? That you like that person. <coughs> there have been times where a man has like flirted with me, but I've thought because I'm tomboyish, mm. like I've always thought of that as banter rather than flirting. And then people are like, when that person's gone, they're like, oh, he's flirting with you. And I'm like, was he? The problem with you making the first move, they always take the hint that you're easy. Oh, she's very easy to talk yeah. to. That means she's easy to get. Mm. Mm. But that's not the case mm. only a minority would think that oh respect that actually. respect that yeah. actually yeah it's it's quite um yeah this is a hard one okay mm-hmm. um dear didis i'm in a serious long-term relationship with a non-nepali and my parents passionately oppose i'm still traumatized from the last time i tried to introduce him as i was berated endlessly and called selfish for not thinking of the family in the past, I've sacrificed a lot for my parents' happiness, including my mental health, Ooh. which got incre- incredibly bad at one point that I had to receive therapy. I understand my parents have sacrificed a lot for me as well, but this is one aspect of my life where I want to fight for what I believe in, as I don't agree with the reasons for the opposition that is unfairly based on discriminatory prejudices. How do I navigate this situation and mentally prepare for the inevitable shit storm? I can relate. I can relate because I was in in more or less the same situation with mm. my parents, right? Mm. Um, so my first relationship was, was with somebody um, from a different caste than mine and not even different um, from what we considered lower caste in our... Like a Dalit, um, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my parents found out and it was bloody difficult okay? the amount of times and the amount of fights it took the amount of it I'm not gonna lie no, I'm not gonna um, sugarcoat things here it destroyed my relationship with my parents like forever you know and was it worth it was the relationship worth it was fighting for what I believed in worth it I would say 100% mm. you know mm-hmm. I know although it ruined my relationship with my parents but they were in the wrong clearly mm. they the reason they gave me was they could have said oh he can't take care of you or he can't um, you know he's a bad guy that reason would have been enough for me to consider my parents yeah. wishes you know yeah, opinions, because yeah. at the end of the day raised me I'm grateful for it mm. but the only reason they gave was he's from a Dalit caste you know and that did not sit me well and I said to them, you know what? At the end of the day, if you want change in our society and if you don't like aspects of our society, be the strong person to struggle mm-hmm. at first because it's a long road of struggle. And there are still people, Hamre age go, that will strongly believe in not marrying somebody from another caste or not marrying somebody from another race. And that is, I don't, I mean, I don't. That's their they, opinion. Yes, yeah, in exactly. Way, like, not yours, yeah. but this is your life. Like you've already mentioned before, you've sacrificed, you've sacrificed your mental health and sacrifice a lot physically and emotionally and mentally, everything. You've already done that, been there, done that. And yet, if they don't understand what you've been through and what you've sacrificed for them, and if they don't even think it's for them, then are they even your parents? Like, yeah. And I personally... I do get attracted to men who are non nepalese mm. so I understand your context in yeah, that as yeah, well. Exactly. And every time I put myself into relationships, because I know like <clears throat> my my mom my family might be okay, but then the surrounding can lure them into saying it's not okay. Mm. So every time before I 
talk to someone i mentally prepare to myself like if this were to happen then i know what way should i be going around it because yeah, yeah. you need to be ready yeah you need to be absolutely ready and the thing is like i for i for once think like parents you sh- they should be they, it's their job to raise you well mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. and yes we're grateful for it but we didn't ask to be born we didn't ask to be taken care that's of my, no. that's my that's exactly. my thingy like that i was like i didn't yeah. go to you being like give birth to me it was your choice to give birth to me yeah so fulfill your duty Duties. and at the end of the day as a parent you should be loving your child unconditionally mm-hmm. and putting them first no matter what and you're absolutely not selfish in um uh, fighting for what you believe in because there is a fine balance between being selfish and be um and taking care of self so good luck to you sis that's all i can mm. say you're in for a long ride i'm glad you've got your man beside you to support because yeah. that's all it needs exactly. in this shit storm yeah. shenanigans and to be honest even if your relationship doesn't go anywhere mm-hmm. um it's still worth fighting for because this is your beliefs right you took the stand yeah, on it exactly. yeah exactly you take a stand on it it's not you, whether you are you're the your boyfriend is there or not whether mm-hmm. anybody else is there is not this is your life your belief mm-hmm. right at the end of the day you would have learned something from it and you would have you will come out stronger it's going to be a, yeah exactly you said long mm-hmm. ride long it's ride it's a long ride it's a long hard ride and you're going to cry and cry and cry you choose your rides that's <laughs> yeah, it like yeah. it's a it, life is a long journey you choose what you want cuz exactly. whatever you pick you're yeah. adding values to yeah. your life not theirs and if you back down now what else are they going to ask you to back down from yeah and if you sacrifice yourself for them later on if you're not happy you'll only blame them yeah and that's going to be it's going to be sour it's a nasty journey yeah. <laughs> you don't want that yeah. <laughs> you don't want that so we are 100% behind you because go, we girl. believe in you go girl so if this like shit storm happens and if you need a shoulder to cry some drinks uh, we've got you sorted you can come along anytime That's it. Yeah. I think that concludes to our agony aunt section. Oh my god. I, I hope f- you liked it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we've gone so deep today. I actually I I never thought we would go this deep and would come up with like this many um opinions and advices on a wimp like this, guys. Okay? From right? people. From, yeah. that, that is true. That's very yeah. true. And then thank you guys for sending your questions in that was a fearless move in itself yeah exactly like uh, yeah. you guys want the world to know obviously you don't we don't know who the person is but yeah. you want the world to know about your yeah. issues and concerns and that just connects more people who yeah. are going through the same things as and you. it's nice because we've always wanted this channel to be a safe space to open up about your exactly. vulnerabilities uh-huh. mm-hmm. you know um and if you want to hear the full episode this is just a short version if you want to full hear the full episode then go on to any major platforms like podcast platforms podcast like platform. Spotify Google um, podcast Apple podcast whatever there is out there um and the this episode has already been aired out on 18th if you've already heard it on the podcast itself mm. this is what we look like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right so anyway thank you for tuning in thank you for bye. tuning in bye